And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers post-game show, and it wasn't exactly a crisis mode or a panic button pushing time, but there came a very definite enough is enough moment from the Rangers tonight. And the result was two goals in 12 seconds to tie it in a game that, well, maybe that point gained might be as much a focus as the game actually lost. Inside our Delta MSG studios, hi everyone. Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Rangers post-game show. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. You know, the Rangers had gone more than 100 minutes without a goal at one point, five periods in a row, and then all of a sudden the bolts of lightning came in the third period. Probably enough on this night to, to offset what ultimately happened? You know why? Yes. And the reason why is that when teams struggle, and this is where I want to categorize a bad team. A bad team is a bad team because when things aren't going their way, they turn to individual play rather than team play when they're down. The Rangers did not do that. They played as a team, not as individuals in the third period. They came up the ice together. It wasn't one guy trying to beat three in the neutral zone or one guy trying to beat three at the offensive blue line. As a goalie, because our perspective is where it is, we know when we've got a team because they changed their game plan from coming and attacking as a team to coming as individuals. And I, I can tell you that that's probably my biggest takeaway and my proudest moment of this game is just seeing that they just stick with it. They just stick with it, and that's why they have the comebacks that they've been able to muster this year, 24. Mm -hmm. And look, uh, this is starting from the beginning of the game. The hard thing is, is that it's not a game that matters to the Flyers. They're mathematically eliminated. They're just out there playing really loose hockey for long parts of this game, it didn't even look like a hockey game that mattered to either team. Yeah. It was wide open, it was sloppy, it was loose. Again, credit to the Rangers though, they were able to bring it together when it mattered in the third to get two points and at least a possibility of it and get to overtime, but hey look, shootout's lost its luster, what can you say about that? It's a skills competition, you get a point and take it and move on. I mean, the Rangers had 86 shot attempts in the game. 46 actually mm -hmm. got to Martin Jones, who allowed three. Uh, Igor Shesterkin faced 26 out of 37 attempts from the Flyers. So very one-sided in terms of putting pucks toward net. Flyers scored two goals within 50 seconds in the first period. They took the lead, one on an inexplicable goal against Igor Shesterkin. That we'll talk about at some point. Then less than a minute into the third period, Flyers made it 3-0. Then came the Rangers' wake-up call, and it was a pretty impressive last 18 minutes of the game, starting with Artemi Panarin. Yeah, and I would say that it even started a little bit before that, right? Because they were building momentum. They were getting pucks to the net from the points that were actually recovered in the first place themselves low and in the corners. So the Rangers were moving quickly. And, you know, you have to, of course, say, you know, credit to the star players because you saw Panarin's wheels turning, and he gets the puck here to Miller, but it's, once again, it's a recovered puck. You've got to get it back because right now everybody's structure on Philadelphia's side is turning and they're all puck watching and now you can use the width of the ice, Miller and Truba, but the sights are set on Panarin here to get his stick on it. Once again, that is a team goal. They built that goal and that's something that you can't say you can do alone and that's why teams lose in this league because they choose to go individual when you still need team play. Talk about team play when you're coming out of your zone. Well, you're low, you make a great defensive play, Lindgren airs it out and then you have three guys that swarm in the neutral zone and once again on the entry use the width of the ice it's a great shot here off the mask it really pops both buckles off of the mask of Jones who had a terrific night in net if not for him maybe you don't get to that point but look it's a rebound play that you finish up and away we go the Rangers are flying at this point and there's belief again and they've been here so frequently that pass right there from Panarin was just out of this world elite elite Elite, three times, John. Yes, sir. And that's a forehand deflection from Cop rather than a backhand. He makes a great play there. So, uh, look, again, take it away as that. Uh, that's a team comeback. I know it's not a win, but it's a team comeback that, once again, you can build on. Yeah, and in fact, when you look at the way that last goal set up, it was only 12 seconds after the 3-2 goal, basically off the faceoff. And for Cop, it's eight points in seven games, now three goals as a Ranger. So that would set the stage for what would come in the overtime and ultimately the shootout where Kevin Hayes, former Ranger, had the only goal of the skills competition against Igor Shesterkin. Now, speaking of Shesterkin, uh, he allows a goal early in the first period off a fluttering knuckleball shot from about 50 feet out 
But yet you look at this game and you look at the final numbers and it's going to be 26 shots on goal. He allowed three. Yep. I would say your expected goal total in It'll your analytics company might be almost double. Yeah, it will be. It'll be high. And uh, speaking to Shesterkin and, and uh, the weak goals, right? Now, all of the goalies in the NHL that have faced 1,000 chances or more, when you put that list together and you compile that list of goalies, it gets pretty elite. You're at about 21 goalies. Shesterkin's allowed the third fewest, what we would call bad goals, goals that go in less than 8% of the time. And he's only given up four since the new year. So it's not like this is something that's trending and he's hurting and we're wondering about him. I mean, not the case. If anything, what great resolve and his ability to come back and park that in this game. When you think of the great teams of of, of yesteryear, whether it's the Oilers with Grant Fuhrer, uh, you can talk about the New York Islanders with Billy Smith. Those guys were always great because their team would go down at one end, forget about them at some point, and then they would face breakaways coming back towards them and find ways to win. Marty Berdur across the river was great for a number of years because he was really good at not facing a lot of shots and then coming up with a big save when needed. But the Stanley Cup champions over the years have all had this ability to make saves in tight on one-on-one -on -one plays. Now, when you look at Shesterkin's night, he came up with several one-on-one -on -one plays, breakaways, two by Tippett. You saw the one-on-one -on -one plus rebound on Hayes, plays that they came down, and it was like a clear-cut lane that they had, the Flyers, and he was really put to mental test here in this game. This was a mental test that he was able to pass with flying colors, in my opinion. Huge save there on Atkinson in the third period. And then once again on Frost. These are all one-on-one -on -one plays. Now this is overtime where it's getting really tight and he's got to make two back-to-back -back breakaway, partial breakaway saves, the one-timer as well from the side. Uh, he was able to assess his game, assert where he was in the game, and then go out and then have an impact in a game that at one point looked like, you know, maybe he was even a goal away from coming out of the game and wearing a baseball hat. Yeah, it did look that way early on. So 4-3 in the shootout. Flyers beat the Rangers. Next up for the Rangers is Tuesday night in New Jersey, and then that concludes the week of rivals with the Pittsburgh Penguins. We want to remind you again, nationally televised games, three more the rest of the season. We will have pre- and post-game coverage here on MSG. That begins Thursday with the game in Pittsburgh, 6.30 for our pregame show. Then against the Flyers on Wednesday, April 13th, 6.30 as well. And then the final one, April 23rd, that's a Saturday. We will be on the air at 2.30, 3 o'clock puck drop, and we will have post games for all of those as well. We will also do that throughout any nationally televised playoff game that the Rangers play. 4-3 the final. We've got more to come on the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. Stick around.